Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this flowery flamingo painting tutorial. I'm so glad you're here. I have a sheet of five by seven watercolor paper that I'm gonna be painting on today. I have it taped down with just some regular painter's tape on my gator board. It's just a hard surface that you can use to tape down your paper. I'm going to be using a my Arteza watercolor set today. It's just one of the many I have. So you can really use any sets of paints that you'd like. I'm using also, I have three brushes here, a number eight, a number six, and a four round. And actually I just use the number four basically through the whole thing. I have a little spritzer bottle. Um, I have two containers of clean water ready to go and um, uh, I will have a paper towel also that I'm going to be having to you know soak my brush on. So the, I'm going to start with my number four and what I'm going to be doing first is filling in just the flower part of the flamingo with a little bit of clean water. I like to get my water uh, water on first. Usually I like to wet my paper first before I start applying any kind of paint because I like it to uh, flow right on my paper. So I'm just gonna start by wetting my brush and I, I dab it on my paper towel and I'm just going in the petals first, just filling it in with a, a light wash of water nothing puddly or anything like that just to not you know just to get it evenly saturated i will have all the products and things that i've used listed below in the description area so look for that and so i'm just getting this all wet just the flower part and i'm going to take a little bit of my bright yellow here and what I like to do is take it from the well and I like to kind of, you know, smear it around on my palette because I like, in case there's any chunky pieces, I like to kind of get them worked out. So in watercolors, you always start from your lightest color to your darkest. So what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of that yellow right there in the center of my flower. It's just a, it's just a five petal flower, nothing fancy about it. I didn't want this tutorial to be too extremely hard. So I'm going to be now taking a little bit of my pink, just a pink color. And because my petals, petals are wet, it will help allow that paint to flow. And I'm just kind of placing it right towards butting up against that pink center or yellow center. Sorry. And I'm taking a damp brush here. Now I've rinsed my brush and I blot it. And then I just take what paint is on my paper and I'm just kind of pulling it out towards the edge of the petal. I don't want to fill my whole petal in with, with one solid color and make it look too flat. So I like to just start with a light wash and then as things dry, I go back and add more color. So I'm just adding a little bit of my paint a little bit more just to kind of get it a little bit darker value a little bit at the top just to kind of accentuate the edge of that petal i'm constantly rinsing my brush and using just a damp brush to move my paint around and because this is a smaller painting i I'm in more concentrated area. I'm holding my brush closer to the ferrule of the brush and the bristles because I'm trying to be a little bit more controlled. So now I'm just going to kind of move to the next petal and just re-wetting it a little bit. And I'm going to just add a little bit of my pink color. I'm also, throughout this tutorial, I'm going to be using some um, orange as well, just a little bit. So I'm just adding a little bit more pink. Rinse my brush, blotted it, and now I'm gonna do the same thing. And I basically do the same thing all around the whole flower. I just pull that paint out a little bit with my damp brush. Move on over to my next petal now. A Little bit of water. 
You don't want globs of water. You don't want like it to be dripping off your brush. So I'm just going to be kind of working my way around, adding a lit little bits of pink. And here and there, just adding a little bit at the edge of the petal to kind of create some texture and some fold-like portions of those petals. Pulling it down. And, it, and you'll notice throughout this painting that I, I jump around a lot um, to let areas dry and I go back and work on them later and then I go move to a different section and I do jump around. So basically this is what I'm doing around this whole petal is just adding in those colors, some pinks and eventually I do some oranges and I'm random, very random where I place the paint on the edges of the petals. I'm, I'm more of an intuitive painter, so I just kind of will get a feeling of where things need to go. And it's kind of hard to teach that. It's just after you're painting for a while, you kind of get to know where you, you might need more color than others. It took me a, it took me a while to, to get into that groove. So I'm just adding a little bit more here and just just kind of pulling it out, constantly rinsing my brush and just using a damp brush to pull that paint out towards the edge of the petals. Same thing placed a little bit at the edge and then I pull it in towards the center a little bit. Sorry for the shaky camera too. I didn't realize that was going on. And I just follow the curve of the petal. I just follow, I don't do straight lines, you know, from the center out. I kind of do small comma shape curves going around the flower. So that is basically the first initial wash on the flower portion of the flamingo. Now I'm going to just take a little bit of that brighter orange and I'm going to add a little bit of that in there as well while my flower is still damp. To kind of just put some right at the edge just like I did with the pink and let it kind of blend in. A little bit on the edge. And just work my way around. And just pulling that paint out. So I'm just doing really light layers on top of each other and just trying to define those petals a little bit more. Just using a damp brush here, just kind of, you know, move things around, spread things out so I don't have any really harsh lines or hard edges, as they're called in the watercolor world. You get lost and found edges.
And one of the most important things in a painting is contrast, which is your darks and your lights. So here I'm just adding a little bit more yellow. So I always like to try and have contrast in my paintings, you know, a darker against a lighter. So now I'm just using clean water and I'm going along the neck of the flamingo. And then I just start dropping in a little bit of pink. And I'm, I'm just going on the outside edge of the neck there. I don't fill it all in. I use, you know, just water to kind of fill it in. Same thing with the, like I did with the petals. I use water a lot. I really paint with, a, with water quite often. And I just kind of pull that paint out towards, to fill in the rest of that neck area. And then I go in with more later, but I don't like to just fill it in one with one swoop. I like to build up my layers and leave parts a little bit lighter than other parts. I don't like the whole thing to just be one flat value of color. So just using a damp brush here, kind of just wetting all that area, getting it ready. And I take a little bit of pink, kind of on the top portion of her head, pull some of that paint down. I'm constantly just, you know, assessing what I need, softening edges with a damp brush. I use that damp brush to pull the paint around. I'm just going to add a little bit more color here now, maybe just a little orange. I use both that orangey color along with my pink throughout this flamingo. And I just kind of let them blend together right on the paper. Now I'm going to start working on her little leaf tail feathers. So I'm going to just same thing, wet with a damp brush, just wet the leaves that I want to start with. And I'm going to use my favorite green, which is a sap green. And I am going to mix in a little bit of a well I was thinking blue but then I didn't like that so I'm adding more green so it's going to kind of be a bright bluish green and then I also am going to be using uh, some hookers green to darker well, that might not be hookers. I'm I, I'm not sure what the names of these colors are on this palette, but it's like an olivey dark green. So I'm just going in now where I've dampened my leaf and I'm just going to kind of real light touch though. I use a real light touch. I'm not pressing down real hard with my brush. And I just put a little bit in and then I go back and just use a damp brush, you know, clean brush to pull that paint out so I just don't fill it in. It's not like coloring where you just fill in between the lines. I don't do that. I, I add paint and then I use water to help 
pull it out and fill it in with just, you know, what's, what's there so I can build up those colors. I'm just kind of softening it up a little bit. Getting a little bit more, the darker right towards the base. I like the darker against the light. I will have a drawing linked below as well for this flamingo if you'd like, you know, to a traceable that you could just trace it. So now I'm just going to, you know, filling in more of the leaves. There's some of that light greenish blue color. Softening things up. So now I'm going to move down to the leaves below. Same thing. But this I started on dry paper. I did not re, you know, wet these first. Start on dry because they're so little. And just put in some of that paint. And now I'm going to go in with a little bit of my darker green and I'm going to kind of separate those two petals just a little bit. And then add that darker green towards the right side of that leaf just to accentuate it a little bit more. And then I go in with a damp brush now and I'm just softening that line and softening where I added that darker green so it's not a start and stop. So it just kind of softens it a bit. And that way it kind of separates that one petal from the other. And kind of doing the same thing now with that other little leaf, adding a little bit of dark to, you know, help give some definition to those leaves and some texture. So now I'm going to do that over here on these leaves as well. Take my darker green at the base and kind of push it into that petal just a little and kind of go down to one side of my leaf on the edge there a little bit. And then I'm rinsing my brush, blot it, pull that in towards the petal a little bit and just softening it up with a damp brush. Gonna add a little bit more of that bluey green just for a variety of color in that leaf. Take my darker green now and work on the next leaf. Just right up with the edge of that petal. 
And then I always go back with a damp brush just to soften up those lines. So now I'm going to add some leaves over towards the front of that flower, top portion, dry paper first. I didn't, I didn't wet this first. Same thing because they were, they were kind of little. And now I'm just separating those petals again. A little bit of my darker green. Not taking it all the way to the center of the petal. I kind of just take it maybe halfway. You see where I'm holding my brush way down, like I'm holding a pen. That's when you know I'm into some finer detail work. Now I'm going to work back up on her neck a little bit more. Got to add it right on dry paper. Adding a little bit darker value pink around the base of her neck, or I'm um, not the base, the edge of her neck there. Softening it up. Pulling the paint up a little bit. And then pulling that paint out a little bit. A little bit orange. I like when it just kind of blends right on the paper together. Now I'm just pulling the paint around her eye area a little bit. Just dotting in a little bit of a darker pink right there around her eye to accentuate where her eye's going to go. And then just pulling it up a little bit. If you notice the very top of her head, I try to keep a little bit lighter. I just don't want it to be all one swoop of, you know, color the same. I like to see lights and darks. Now I'm going to go back to my flowers, kind of darken up those edges a little bit, pull it down some to really accentuate those petals. And then I go in with a damp brush and just kind of pull some of that down. So it's just like, it's you, you just need to build your layers, build up your layers. Same thing with this petal. I just put some random little lines in there and then I soften them up and bring it all down towards the center. Now I don't you know, I do the same darkness on each petal or in the same position on the petal. I, I just kind of pick and choose where I want my darker values to be. 
I add a little bit and then I just take a damp brush, clean damp brush, and pull it in towards the center. Now I'm going to add a little bit of pink here and I'm kind of just and then maybe a little bit in the center pull it out a little bit but as you can see I'm kind of they're kind of curved the little places of uh, paint that I'm putting they're they're not just straight they're kind of curved a little bit to follow the shape of the petal and then I soften it all up A lot of people find watercolors difficult because they say it's harder to fix mistakes than with other mediums. But I can see that. But yeah, it really is easier. It is it is not hard. It's not hard to fix mistakes if you make mistakes. Just got to try and get it while it's still damp a little bit. But there are secrets and techniques on on fixing mistakes with watercolors. Well, that's another video. So same thing, just emphasizing my petals here. So just trying to define the shape of my flower. So here at the base of her neck, I'm going to kind of darken up a little bit of pink and just to, you know, kind of bring that out a little bit more. Kind of against that lighter portion of the petal. So it kind of separates the flower from her neck. And now with these leaves and uh, the petals, I'm just going to kind of define them just a little bit more, adding in a little bit more separation between my flowers with my greens. Every now and then it helps to stop and take a look at your painting to see what it needs. Now here, I, I kind of felt like it needed more leaves so I'm just painting these in. I did not draw these in first. So I'm just painting in a few small leaves. And then once I did that, I didn't like it because it had four sets of leaves. And I'm funny. I don't like to do things in even numbers. So what I'm going to do is add more petals or sorry, more leaves to the edge of that leaf section. So there will kind of be an odd number of leaves. I didn't, I was like, ah, because I didn't want to just circle the whole flower with leaves. So I'm darkening these up a little bit and then I'm going to go back in and add like two more leaf shapes to the top, of those bigger leaves. Because as you notice, my flower petals, there's five. I like to do things in odd numbers. It just looks more pleasing to me. So here I'm going to add two more, painting in two more leaves, random heights. 
So it just kind of gives it a little bit more of an odder amount, if you will. And then I just go in and, and darken those up a little bit. Just adding a little bit darker along the edges and then just soften it up. Kind of darken that up a little bit, separating the petals, and just adding a little bit of more color, more pigment down through those leaves. All right, so now I'm going to work on her her beak, and I don't like to use black paint. I don't care if it's in the palette or not. I don't like to use it. I like to make my own black. I feel it's more of an interesting color. So what I like to use is my favorite way to make black. There's so many different ways, but my favorite way is to use um, an ultramarine blue or, you know, some kind of dark blue. And my burnt sienna. And what I do is I just mix those two until I get the desired shade of dark it doesn't have to be pure black it just has to be dark and if i mix these two together with you know not a bunch of water because if you add water it's just going to lighten it up you get like a more interesting dark color and it almost looks black but it might have a little bit of a bluish undertone to it um you know depending on the colors you mix to get black. I mean, you can mix your three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, just in, you know, equal amounts and just, or, or more or less, just, just you test them out. You just have to test them out to get dark colors. You just don't add a lot of water. So here I'm just kind of, you know, filling in her beak a little bit, kind of pulling the line up to the back portion and a little bit up in the front portion. And I kind of make it jaggedy. I don't make it real um, smooth, smooth inside there. I make it a little bit of a jagged or jaggedy edge. And then I go up, um, you know, just to kind of lightly outline. I don't make it a real thick, dark outline. And then I just use that same color just to kind of make a little tiny little dot circle right in that little V groove between that little V groove that um, was left out. And I just kind of go in and add a real light wash of pink on the back edge of her beak there. So now I'm going to be doing her leg, and I'm kind of no, I kind of have do this a lot with my flamingos. I just do a uh, one leg, so I'm just going to kind of go in between those leaves and just go. I go straight down with my pink and just make a straight line. I kind of known for that. But you can do, you know, if you want to put your little knobby knees in, you can. If you want to do two you can so I just kind of go straight down and then at the base I just go across a little bit so then I kind of step back and look at her and see if she needs anything else. I'm going to just kind of add a little bit more dark next on each side of her eye there. 
kind of just take a little bit more pigment, maybe fill it on a little bit more of my center in, a little bit of orange mixed in maybe. And I think that's it. So thank you so much, everybody. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me at any time. Take care.